Hey everyone, Shadow here, and welcome to another Marvel Contest of Champions video. So we're going to be going over the latest Dev Diary, which is all about the champions of the contest. Now I'm not going to go line by line. I have it here so you can read it for yourself, but by the time you see this, it should already be in the forums. So you will have a chance to read it uh, in its entirety in detail. All right, but I'm just going to go over some highlights that I like here. Uh, but basically, in the first part of this, they're talking about their vision and they're explaining, you know, not in too many details what they're planning to do uh, in terms of champions. All right. This section here, making the champions more desirable. They go into um, different things like their champion design review uh, and things like that. All right. Um, you can see here, they, they're trying to define the problem. We already know, most of us know what the problem is, the pain points, but they're explaining it. Uh, so it's a good idea to take a look, read it. Um, at least you know that they are aware of the, uh, issue. That doesn't mean they're aware of everything, but this gives you an idea of what they are aware of. Okay. Now, this next section about choice doesn't have to mean complexity. Uh, there was a concern that they were going to start making champions far less complex. And some people like the complex champions. And we know about champions that are really complicated to use and the payoff just isn't there. And then you have a champion that's very simple to use and is very powerful. Uh, so they're not saying that they are ruling out having any kind of complex champion, but they're talking a little bit more about how they can move the complexity, you know, like uh, the uh, pre-fight ability, that kind of thing. You could have a complex uh, set of options before you even start the fight or maybe before you even start a quest. And you can make your decisions there while you have time and you're not under pressure in the middle of a battle, okay? So just an idea of uh, what they're doing. Cross-fight abil abilities as well, they talked uh, or mentioned a little bit, all right? And let's see here. All right, yep, yep, yep. Yeah, more stuff in the kit is not always better. Uh, one of the things that I'm doing in this video is I'm toning it down. You know, I'm not talking about every single thing here. Uh, they mentioned the content creator program, which I am a part of, uh, and it has been very helpful to them. This is why leaks and things like that, we don't want to see that because it can endanger the program that has been very useful. They've gotten a lot of feedback and we have seen our feedback going into effect, you know, um, in the designs that they're doing, you know, they don't take every single thing we say, of course, but they are listening. Okay. Um, interactive, but predictable. Uh, let me tell you, I don't like using ghost rider without blade. The reason I don't is because there's a chance for ghost rider to fail to, uh, land a judgment. That's not what you want. If you look at some of my earlier videos on ghost rider, uh, I was trying to get a, I, I fired off a heavy and I was trying to get a heal and I fired off like maybe two, three heavies in a row. No judgment for the heal. I, that's no, I don't like that. Okay. Um, but it looks like they are going to do things, um, a little bit better. They're not saying that they're going to have everything that's guaranteed, but they're going to make it clear whether this is something that you know, has a 100% chance to trigger or something that can reduce it so that it has less of a chance uh, to trigger, okay? And they're talking more about the description and communicating that to us. And I hope that they make less champions that have abilities that can, you know, that are not reliable, all right? Uh, consistency and how new abilities are worded. Again, they're talking about the uh, descriptions and that sort of thing. Okay. Invest, investing in cleanup of older inconsistent abilities that don't follow the rules. 
So we call that sort of uh, normalizing. So you have a new set of rules. You've got champions that were created before those new rules went into effect. So they're going to go back and fix those champions so that they now adhere to the rules. Good, good, good. All right. Balancing. Some champions are more equal than others. We know this very well. Uh, we tend to use the same champions if we have them over and over again because they are just that much better than all the rest of the champions. Okay. And they're just talking a little bit about what they're doing, where that's concerning. All right. You see the four bullet points here. Uh, they're looking to add value to underperforming champions. They're not giving any details. Uh, champion update strike team. So they have a team that's going to be addressing just this. That's huge, let me tell you. Uh, because on a development team, if you have the same team trying to put out two champions every month and they're trying to do the balancing and all that stuff, you're not going to get good quality. What's going to happen is they're going to have to allocate some time to pull one of the developers off of something else in order to do this. But now you have a team dedicated to this. So we should see more responsiveness uh, out of them. Uh, nerfs will occasionally be ne necessary. We hate hearing that, but it is a fact. You know, it's a fact of life, you know, game life. Uh, sometimes they make a mistake they put out a champion that maybe has an interaction they weren't anticipating uh the champion is just way too good performing well above what they intended they gotta you know bring it back into line um hopefully the team and uh if they can focus a little bit more they can reduce the number of nerfs that are necessary okay uh, primary goal is to buff up the bottom end of the roster before any potential nerfs. So we're going to get buffs first before they address any of those overperforming champions. And of course, I always get nervous when I hear that nerf word, okay? Um, because I don't want my good champions nerfed. Nobody does, okay? And quite frankly, in all my years of playing video games, I don't trust them to do it well. Anytime they start nerfing things, they usually nerf it so that it's no longer um, fun to play or, or good or anything like that. Hopefully that's not the case. And it doesn't happen all the time. Some nerfs result in, you know, a nice balanced champion, but I still don't trust them. Okay. Uh, but that's a little glimpse into what they're doing. Uh, and where their head is at, pretty much. Now, uh, in order to have any meaningful discussion, you want to define your terms, okay? Um, there's a gnat flying around here just having fun. Um, but balanced means that the champion is good enough for now or better. Tune-up means no ability changes, but they may tune up some numbers. And they did this in the past with Torch and Sentry. Uh, update means that they're going to update the numbers just like in a tune-up, but there may also be minor ability changes. Uh, but largely, it's going to be the same champion, you know, like what they did with Red Hulk and Carnage. And then you have the Big Daddy, overall overhaul, uh, which is a whole new kit, okay, like Hulkbuster and Colossus. Uh, if you remember the Colossus uh, buff, that was a complete rework. Colossus went from zero to hero. He was a champion that people kept at rank one. After they got done with him, I took mine to rank five. Okay. They do very good. They have a very good track record for overhauls. Okay. So this allows them also to categorize uh, what the champion needs. So if a champion is slated for an overhaul, that's going to take more time. Update will take less time than an overhaul. Tune-up will take less time than an update. And balanced, of course, takes no time because they're not going to change it. Okay? Uh, so here's the first rotation that they're going to do. You know, they've got one overhaul that they're going to do. They got a tune-up and they got an update. Okay? And then they're going to just keep doing that. So they're going to overhaul a champion. They're going to tune-up a champion. They're going to update a champion. 
then they're going to go right back and overhaul another champion. Okay. Now with this initial kickoff, as you see here, uh, they're going to have not one, which is the normal rotation, but this time they're going to do two overhauls. Okay. Which is coming out, uh, the build at the end of August. So we're, we're right here, you know, um, and that's just the beginning. You know, they're going to expand the strike team, as you see there, uh, with the target being to allow uh, them to double this cadence. OK, so two per build. So their initial rollout, they're going to have two overhauls. But after that, it's going to go back to the one overhaul, one tune up, one update until they expand the strike team. And then it's going to be two of each. So two overhauls, two tune-ups, and two updates. That's their ultimate goal, but they're going to start off with just one for now, which is good. Uh, we don't want them to do two and then, you know, not have all the bugs and kinks uh, worked out, which there's still going to be bugs, you know. Okay, uh, so here we go. There's the, uh, uh, the dates, or the month anyway. So September is going to see the two hauls, uh, two overhauls. Uh, then in October, they're going to do the tune up, which is going to be Punisher 2099. And then in November, they're going to have two updates, Gambit and Falcon. Okay. And remember what all those mean. Okay. Whoops. Sorry about that. Hit that button by mistake. All right. So let's see here. There we go. And yeah, at least two champions per month, uh, throughout 2021. So the first big bad is Magneto and he needs it. Oh, does he need it? Um, they're not giving you any details into what they're actually going to do with Magneto. But what they're talking about here is that both the Magnetos are going to be getting the overhaul and one Magneto is going to focus more on metal. So he'll have, you know, probably some boost against metal champions. Um, and the other one is going to be uh, more for heroic. Okay, so you see down here, they talk about um, the rework is going to do, you know, either the villainous side or the heroic side, um, hunting down both metal and heroic. Uh, and then Magneto Marvel Now, which is the white one, uh, is going to be embracing the redemptive side. And that's going to enhance the heroic and metal champions. So one you know, is going to do, let me see, uh, probably metal. And then this one, uh, heroic. So I'm assuming the other one will be villainous or villain. Um, I didn't see that there. It says more villainous side. So maybe, let's see, just trying to make sure that I understand this embracing his redemptive to enhance heroic and metal on his team. Okay. Okay. So I, I kind of see where they're going uh, with that. So one might buff the team a little bit more. And the other one is more of a debuff to enemies. You know, we'll see. So maybe if you have metal champions on your team, the um, Magneto Marvel now will help out more in that case. I'm just guessing because they haven't told us anything. Okay. But, uh, you know, you can see here, we'll focus on his villain side, hunting enemy metal champions. Marvel now we will focus on the redemptive, uh, enhancing metal teammates. Okay. And they're both coming out uh, at the end of August. Then you have this champion tease. I don't like being teased. So let's just move on. You can read it. All right. And, uh, we have the five star Wolverine. Uh, if you saw my crystal opening, I don't have a five star Wolverine. Sorry, spoiler. But I did go for him at least. All right. Um, and then five star Scarlet Witch finally coming soon after the summer. Now, here is something that was exciting me, and I hope it excites you too. There are going to be changes to crystals. Now, they are not telling us everything that they're going to be doing. Uh, overall, they tell you a little bit about where their head is at, but the one thing that they are mentioning is that we're going to have dual class basic hero crystals, 
So if you want that mutant champion, you're going to have a crystal that only has mutant and skill. Then uh, you also have one that has science and mystic, another one that has cosmic and tech. So it's a way of narrowing down your options. Okay, so if you want that doom, you're going to go for the science mystic one. Okay, and they're going to have this uh, appear one every, uh, I guess, for 24 hours. Uh, so I guess one a day and it'll rotate. So mutant skill day one, four and seven. Okay, um, and that is going to come late July. We are in July now. Uh, early August, so sometime within the next, uh, you know, this month or early next month. Uh, they're also going to improve the five and six star featured hero crystals. So we're going to have a better way of targeting the champions that we want. The pool has gotten large and it's really difficult. If you've watched my crystal openings, I have a dupe counter and it's just sad and it doesn't excite me because I get mostly dupes because when you have a roster that's over a certain amount, you know, and you have no way of targeting your champions, this is what happens. Okay. Um, but they're going to be improving that. And this one here has me very interested. The wish crystal bottom line of the wish crystal, uh, is you're going to be able to build your own crystal. All right. Um, they don't have the tech in right now. So they don't have any date to share with us, but the general idea is that you're gonna be able to select a certain number of champions to be in that crystal, okay? So you get to sort of create your own pool of champions. You still have randomness, and they talk about that here. You're never gonna get rid of the randomness. Randomness is a part of the battle realm, and I wouldn't want them to get rid of the ram randomness either. Uh, but this helps to narrow things down. You know, if you get a random uh, five champions that you selected and you miss out on the one you really wanted, you're still going to get something that you liked, you know? So I'm looking forward to that, uh, but we don't have any time. You see, they said it's targeted late 2020, early 21, uh, 2021. Okay, but that looks very interesting to me. And then six stones, basically they're going to be um, improving the number of six stones. If you are free to play or cheap to play or whatever you want to call it, basically if you don't buy the offers, you don't get six stones. Okay, so whatever you want to call me, cheap to play, uh, what have you, I don't buy these offers. So... I don't get six stones unless they offer them for units. Okay. And what they're saying here is they're going to be changing that. And it's going to be based on your progression level. So one of the things that's really annoying is the solo events giving me and anyone who's level 60 an XP boost. We don't need it. We don't want it. We tend to use it for the item use event. Uh, but I have like a million shards for those uh, crystals because I have no need of most of the stuff in there. They're going to be addressing that. They're going to be updating the solo events. I hope they get rid of that event completion. I really do. Uh, but that's what they're talking about. They explicitly mention goodbye XP boosts. Okay. See it All right there. Goodbye XP boosts. Okay. So we're going to have new solo crystals and all of that. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, you can see here that their goal is uh, that we'll be able to get uh, at the uncollected one five-star SIG stone crystal uh, for, you know, per 22 hour event from Milestones. So they're going to add that to the uh, solo event for uncollected and for Cavalier. They are going to get one five-star six stone crystal, just like uncollected, but they're also going to get one five-star six stone generic from the milestones. That's all we wanted. I, I was, I was very happy when I read that. Okay. So now once they implement this, we'll have a good chance to max out 
the signature on some of these champions that we we have. So I'm looking forward to this. I'm looking forward to this big time. But we don't know when this is going to happen. Um, you can see here uh, they they mentioned the five stars. Uh, they do want to do it for six stars, but not right now. Okay. And that's pretty much it. You know, you can see the outro here, um, but that's it. That is all that I have to talk about this time around. Uh, I know people won't be happy with the vagueness of some of the stuff, but I like the communication. I like knowing that they're at least talking about it, thinking about it. And I like getting a glimpse into what they have planned. You know, even if we don't have any details yet, I like this. Now, that might be because I'm a developer myself and it's like sitting in on uh, one of our developer meetings, you know, and I'm reading this and I'm seeing all this and I love it. I love it. So hopefully uh, you enjoyed this as well. Uh, I know that, you know, if you're really disgruntled with the game right now, this is not going to really help. But let's hope that the future is bright. Okay, so take care. Click like, subscribe, leave a comment. Let me know what you thought about this video. And you all have a blessed day.